honoring the participants of the Battle of Great Bridge and its significance to the success of the American Revolution is a key function of the Great Bridge Battlefield Waterways Museum. Its mission also entails the importance of our historic waterways that are central to Chesapeake's history and community. I'm Jim Hazel, welcome to another Peak Life. With me now is Lynn Olson, Executive Director of the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways History Foundation. Yay! I got it right, that you one's did. for Bill. That was for Bill. How are things shaping up here at the Foundation and our museum? Oh my gosh, it is coming to an end. We are so blessed. It's a beginning. It, yeah, a beginning, <laughs> yes, a, a beginning, but this project is coming full, full circle. Cool. We are starting today, they're going to begin painting the back museum area. Gauntlet gray. Okay. Gauntlet gray. So it'll give you a, the depth that we need so you'll be able to see the artifacts. That's a colonial the, color. That is, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it is as of today. Right. Uh, and tell us about some of the features. I know there's actually going to be some high-tech uh, sort of interpretive. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes. Okay, so first of all, when you do enter the museum, you're going to see colonial living as it was. We have been very fortunate to have received so many phenomenal family archive materials, furniture, so forth, from the 1700s. But then, when you walk a little bit further, you're going to step into the three-ton tavern. And I know you know about that, Jim. Yeah, I heard about it. it <laughs> that, there was I a, wasn't old enough to actually oh, attend on. a three-ton tavern. I was underage at the time, I think. Well, I, I think so. But anyhow, uh, we found out that in colonial days, there was actually a three-ton tavern in the village of Great Bridge. Mm. That being said, we're recreating it. Because in the 1700s, that's where they got their news of the day. Right. Not only their drink and their food many times, but they got their news of the day. So rather than turning on CNN, which you would probably do today, or Chesapeake News, yeah. they would go to the Three Ton Tavern and they would, they would have their drinks, but they would hear, most importantly, the concerns of the villagers right, right. and the concerns of our nation, what was becoming our nation. Excellent. And so we're bringing that to life. I learned something really exciting the other day. And do you know why a bar is called a bar? Uh, I suspect because they locked up the victuals or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> At the end of the day. Libations. Woohoo, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually they did. They started having to put bars on top of the tavern portion of the tavern because of the fact that the villagers or the, the people that were traveling that would stay overnight, some of them slept on the floors and guess right. what they'd help themselves to in the middle of the night. <laughs> so that's how a bar became a bar. Okay. Yeah. And well what else is coming in? Okay. I know you got this <clears throat> huge room. There's such a beautiful space in here. Uh, tell us out. Okay, well. well let me finish a little bit more about the museum okay. first. Okay, so we're gonna have a prelude to the battle and in there you're gonna hear and see a lot of good things that led up to the battle. Okay. okay. When you go in the battle room, you're gonna feel... Battle room? Yes, there's gonna be a battle room in the center and when you walk into the battle room, you're gonna feel like you're in the middle of the battle. Last week I had the pleasure of going to Richmond with some of our reenactors from the 7th Virginia Regiment and they went up. Now give me, let me tell you this, you Ask a reenactor to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, have them drive to Richmond, Virginia, give them coffee and donuts and let them put on their uniforms. They were ready for battle. They'll do anything for the cause. <laughs> and anything the donuts. Anything for the cause. Exactly. And the donuts. <laughs> exactly. So those guys, I, I mean, they could not have been better. So rather than hire professional actors right. to portray a battle, why not use the, the guys that actually battle the every year? people who have been on the front lines you of bet. restoring and, our, uh, our, our place on exactly. the get-go. The ones that have died for the cause. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and luckily, not really right, died. Right. Yes, yes, so forth. So. I cannot begin to tell you how impressed I was and mm. how exciting that day was and to watch them bring our story and our legacy alive. It, it was phenomenal. It'll blow your socks off. So it's a multimedia sort of presentation it, that you have oh, in yes. Wisconsin. Oh, yes. And people volunteer actually to be in that exhibit. That oh, my was. gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was, it was so much fun. And again, I don't want to take away from what you're going to experience right. hopefully in just a few months. After that's going to be the aftermath of the battle. What happened afterwards? And we're going to talk about the burning of Norfolk. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we will have either on display or a copy of it is we purchased, my husband and I have purchased a newspaper from the 1700s that talks about the burning of Norfolk. It's right. an original account of it. And that'll be part of that exhibit. So it'll talk about what happened after the battle. Okay. Because it wasn't just the battle and it was over with, as you know. Yeah. And so we'll do that. And then we'll go into a room where they'll talk about the building of the ships and the, the canals. We'll start talking about the canals and stuff. Then 
One of the big excitements that I'm finding is that the Army Corps of Engineers, they're going to rebuild, they're going to put in a bridge tender's office. Oh. So you're going to be able to go in there and work on a control panel that was from the 1950s. Oh. You'll be able to have a little... You can go back in time and lower the bridge well, in time to drive your 57 Chevy over. Sim <laughs> similar, similar. But basically what it's going to be is it's going to show, it's going to educate you on why the bridge and why the locks are so important in this community and in this yes. area. And then we've got a couple other surprises before they leave the museum area. But what we've done here is we've taken our nation's legacy. Uh -huh. One of the reasons we know we fly an American flag and we've brought it to life for future generations. And it all happened right here. In the, yes, in the village of Great <laughs> On Bridge, this very spot. On this very spot. You got it. You're doing good. You're doing good. So when, when do you think we'll open or, or well, it's going to take some time to build that? Right. Well, a lot of things are still being done outside because keep in mind, a lot of it's going to be um, uh, audio and, uh -huh. and video and that's being done off site. So okay. while it may not look like a lot's happening, it's happening every day outside this area. Well, we're painting later today, so we'll pick yes. up a brush. You bet. You bet. <laughs> yes. I expect you to come back in your right? paint clothes. I'm in my paint clothes, so just in case. There's a lot going on, a lot happening at the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways History Foundation, as well as the Great Bridge Battlefield Waterways Museum. Stay tuned, history's coming alive right here. For more information, just go to gbbattlefield.org. And also, there's upcoming events yep. in late October. The waterways Festival. We're waterways Festival. Bring the history of the waterways. It'll be a one-day festival, October 26th, Saturday, October 26th. And that night, we're talking about doing a ghost lantern tour. See? <laughs> and they have tri-cornered hats. So, yes. So stay tuned. This is one of the only places you can get them. They don't make them like this they anymore. They don't. All right. Stay tuned. And thanks for joining us here on Peak Life. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having us.